Hello, it's Robert Miner with Dynamic Traders Group with this week's DT 5-Minute Update and Trade Strategy for Twitter and YouTube followers. I appreciate you all following me last year. I hope you're finding some value out of these short videos. And always keep in mind, whether you trade the market that I talk about in these uh, short updated videos is what you learn you can apply to any market in any time frame. And if you want to learn more, check out my book, High Probability Trading Strategies, and of course, Check out our regular regular reports um, at dynamictraders.com or DT reports for futures and stock and forex traders. Okay, let's get started and take a look at a couple of markets that are likely to have some good trade setups this coming week. Before we get started in current markets, just a little review is last week, last Saturday's uh, video that I did for YouTube and uh, Twitter subscribers had two potential trade setups. One was in soybeans, the other was in gold. And uh, both of them were at a position to have completed a corrective decline. And we uh, identified specific trade strat setups to go along in both of those uh, for a potential continuation of the bull t trend. Now, neither of those setups was elected. Uh, in soybeans, we continued to decline for uh, well throughout this past week, actually, and we exceeded what was the targets for a correction. So we just we avoided any go long trade strategy in soybeans. Never elected. Uh, keep in mind that uh, the objective of trading is to identify conditions with a high probability outcome, and then identify specific trade strategy, excuse me, trade strategies to take advantage of those conditions. And when the conditions no longer exist, then you avoid the trade strategy. That happened to soybeans, happened in gold also. You can go back and review that video from a week ago, but we had a gold setup which was only good for Tuesday. It was closing and trading above particular levels. If they did that on Tuesday, there was an entry strategy. They did not do it on Tuesday, so that setup was voided also. And more than likely, we're not going to look at gold today, but more than likely it's about to roll over to the downside. So even even though at the end of the week it exceeded those levels we were looking at, uh, it didn't do it on Tuesday and it, it had to do it on Tuesday to elect that trade. So we're probably going to roll over in gold. We'll see. We'll take another look at that uh, the next time we have a real low risk, high probability setup. So now we're going to look at the S&P or any of the stock indexes, is this past week was significant because it was the first week uh, yeah, for the 13 DT oscillator, or 13 weekly momentum, to make a bear reversal since back uh, on the uh, early October low. So that itself is significant. We'll look at the daily in a minute. We've, uh, for our subscribers, we're already triggered into a short trade uh, with minimal capital exposure. But I, what I want to I talk to you now about is things to look for in the days and weeks ahead to confirm if we've actually made a weekly high or not. So number one, this is our last week's bar. That was the largest weekly decline since the October 4th low. That's called an overbalance of price. That's a term WD GAN used, overbalance of time and price, which were are always warnings that the higher time frame trend is reversing. It hasn't confirmed that reversal, the bear reversal, but we're at least on warning that because the overbalance of price and the uh, DT oscillator making a bear reversal that we've completed a weekly high. If we've completed a weekly high, we, then we have to identify what can the market do to confirm that indeed the weekly high is complete. And if it's that we get that confirmation, then what would we anticipate the follow through to be? Well, just looking at weekly data, we would need a weekly close below the close uh, weekly close of January 30, 32.35.50 to confirm that this is a weekly high. So until that is made, uh, this may just be a short-term correction, short-term decline. But if we make this close below 32.35.50, weekly close, that is, then we can an anticipate the minimum follow-through should be a decline to the 50% retracement at 30.96.25. 
and a time retracement, minimum time retracement, into the first week of March. So that would be significant information if, indeed, we got this weekly close below it. So uh, make a note of that, and uh, I'm not forecasting that's going to happen. I just identify waypoints and important triggers that if they occur, then they indicate uh, some follow-through. So that's what we're looking at uh, based on the ES. Here's ES daily data. And again, I still got the question mark above this January 22nd high as a wave five because it hasn't confirmed that that's the case. Now, if we're looking at the daily data, a uh, close below, a daily close below 32.59 also indicates we've completed that wave five weekly high. So we got, if, depending on which data we're looking at, um, certainly on the daily, that will be our initial signal that uh, a wave five and a weekly high is complete, and then we should continue sideways to down at least into early March and reach that 50% retracement. And then if we get a, a weekly close below the level we just looked at, that that's a double confirmation. So we uh, we can be really sure that the market's going to be sideways to down into early March and reach that 50% retracement. So what about near term? Near term is the daily momentums are dual look back bearish. So we should be sideways to down for another two to three days. Now, keep in mind that's sideways to down. Doesn't mean we're going to have a big, uh, big bear move. We may have. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but sideways to down uh, for another two to three days in early next week, more than likely at least. So if, you, if you're not already short, like uh, our subscribers are from our DT trade alerts, um, What's the next setup? So that's the other thing you can do is you don't have to pick the top, pick the bottom, that sort of thing, is you just have to recognize the possibility that it's made that higher time frame reversal, and then what would your trade strategy be? Well, in this case, uh, I did a, a tutorial for our DT Report subscribers and DT software owners uh, was three or four weeks ago, and it's called The Safest Time to Buy or Sell, and that's a quote from W.D. Gann. And the safest time to buy or sell, according to GAN, and it's very logical, is following the first reaction against the new trend. Well, what's another way to state that? It's to identify, in Elliott terms, a wave 2 or a wave B. When they're complete, those are the first corrections against a new trend and to identify when those corrections are complete, the first correction following the higher time frame trend reversal, to position in the direction of the trend. So in this case, um, we would want to look for the first correction, and we had helped identify that with our momentum, uh, and momentum cycle. So the next bear reversal in our daily momentum, now that could be several days away, uh, as much as we'll say five to seven days from now before we get that. But that would probably coincide with a corrective, a corrective rally. In other words, we'd probably make a wave one or a decline and then a wave two or B correction. And that's would be the ideal time to enter on the short side with minimal capital exposure. So that's why we focus our attention on identifying corrections once we believe a new trend has begun. So we have the possibility of a new bear weekly bear trend that's going to last several weeks into early March. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but if we get a bear reversal in our daily momentum while price is below the January 22nd high, then that's probably going to coincide with a correction against the bear trend, and then the bear trend would continue to a new extreme. So that's what we're looking at for the uh, stock indexes here in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, so again, you don't have to pick the high, you don't have to pick the low, you just have to recognize the potential that a higher time frame trend has reversed and then develop a specific 
trade strategy to enter with low capital exposure and a high probability outcome. And of course, that's what we do every day for these markets uh, that we follow in our DT reports. So I hope if you liked what you learned today, check out our DT reports at dynamictraders.com and keep your eye on the uh, ES here in the days ahead to see if we get that confirmation that a higher time frame weekly high has been made or not. That's it for today. Robert Miner, over and out.